Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Next, we'll highlight fellows from Cyclotron Road, the founding program at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. I'd like to introduce Tom Boosie, Managing Director at Activate Cyclotron Road. Welcome, Tom. Uh, thank you, John. So uh, yes, my name is Tom Busey. I'm the managing director at Cyclotron Road. As John said, the first uh, the inaugural leap node in the three leap node configuration at the National Labs. Um, as part of this, I thought it'd be useful actually to go through a little bit of the history and evolution of Cyclotron Road. Again, it was founded in uh, 2015 with the funding of the first class. Uh, AMO was the sole sponsor of the initial class and has been the stalwart supporter and uh, kind of foundational partner for us uh, over the last six years. Um, the next sort of phase of operation were cohorts two and three, which expanded on the original model and I think inspired the foundation of the sister programs at Argonne, uh, at CRI and, and Innovation Crossroads. Um, uh, again, second and third uh, fellow classes were entirely supported by AMO as well. Uh, in more recent years, Cyclotron Road has diversified its um, sponsorship base for fellows, um, in addition to ongoing support by the Department of uh, Energy through, uh, through AMO and other offices. We added uh, first a trial and then a full half a cohort funded by DARPA in the 2018-2019 timeframe. And we also added uh, philanthropic support as a mechanism for funding, uh, directly funding fellows it, within the program. Um, and bringing us up to last year, it's a pretty big year for the organization. Um, the Cyclotron Road was always organized under a slightly different uh, mechanism where there was a partnership between Lawrence Berkeley National Labs and a nonprofit, which was originally called Activation Energy and has been renamed Activate. Um, Activate itself has launched a second site uh, called Activate Boston, um, based in the Cambridge area. Uh, and in the last round, um, I'd say the Department of Energy stepped up in a big way and expanded support out of its traditional uh, AMO office to additional EER offices for direct support of fellows, including building technologies, bioenergy, and the geothermal offices. And we're super grateful for that and grateful for Joe Kresge and his team uh, continuing to build um, excitement and momentum for support of the LEAP programs uh, within the DOE. Um, so uh, as John has laid out, I think you're probably familiar, while we have slightly different management structure, our, our sort of goals and operation model are the same. We're really here to, to first uh, attract a world-class scientist with entrepreneurial technologies that aren't quite a company yet. Uh, we hope we are partnered with two host institution, LDL, as well as the uh, University of California, Berkeley, to provide both physical and intellectual uh, support of the uh, teams. And our objective, of course, is to, is to help them through the two years in their fellowship and position them for success going forward, whatever form that takes, particularly to their company. And I think you've seen illustrations of that already, uh, I think in the several teams we've seen from CRI. Um, so we've been out the longest, we have the longest track record. Uh, I think we're really beginning to get demonstrable evidence of the efficacy of this program. As Dave Danielson pointed out in his opening remarks, uh, at Cyclotron Road, we've now been able to support 50 companies, over 68 fellows. All but one company is still in business. 
which is pretty extraordinary in a high tech space, uh, high tech, uh, you know, early stage technology space. I think critically, we really shown the power of, of leveraging government financing uh, to stimulate private investment where our, uh, con you know, our cohort companies have raised, we funded them directly to the tune of about $25 million. And they've gone on to raise over 175 million in follow on financing, both from competitive grants, uh, as well as um, venture capital investment. And we, we think that number is going to continue to grow, obviously, as our earlier teams uh, become more mature and raise later and later rounds, uh, rounds of capital. Um, so uh, I'd say with that, I want to finish with the most important slide, which is uh, I can't stress enough that, you know, we're not developing companies, uh, we're, we're developing people. You know, our product is uh, our humans and our mission is human capital development. Um, we've been able to support 68 fellows to date and we're looking forward to supporting hundreds more in the future. Uh, yeah, you're going to hear from five of our current fellows from cohorts five and six. And I'm going to take this opportunity to shamelessly plug the upcoming uh, application window um, come October, the month of October, you can go to either the Psychotron Road or Activate websites for more information on how to apply. And I'm looking forward to seeing a new set of innovators join us in the following years. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to present at the Leap Demo Day on behalf of Cyclotron Road. My name is Cody Finke, and I am the co-founder and CEO of Brimstone Energy. Brimstone Energy produces cost-competitive, ordinary Portland cement without processed CO2 emissions. Today, the production of ordinary Portland cement is responsible for approximately 8% of global CO2 emissions. That's almost as much as all of the emissions from all of the world's cars put together. Cement is believed to be an especially challenging sector to decarbonize because 60% of these emissions are process emissions, meaning that with even completely clean energy, 60% of cement's emissions would persist. This slide shows how cement is made today. First, limestone and clay are mined and then milled to a powder. The rock is then put into a kiln where it is thermally decomposed to produce carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. This carbon dioxide is the process emissions that we have been talking about, and the calcium oxide is the key ingredient in cement. Upon further heating, the calcium oxide reacts with the clay to produce ordinary Portland cement. Portland cement is then mixed with a supplemental cementitious material which is typically sourced from a third party and is a byproduct of burning coal. The resulting cement mixture is then mixed with sand, gravel, and water to make the building material concrete. Currently, limestone is the only source of calcium that is used to make cement, but other major reserves of calcium exist, including calcium silicates and basalts. Unlike limestone, these alternative sources of calcium do not contain carbon dioxide. However, until now, it was not possible to separate the calcium from the rocks to economically produce Portland cement. The brimstone process starts with a non-limestone calcium-containing rock. We developed a proprietary leaching process, which can selectively separate calcium salts from the source rock. The calcium salt then goes into a kiln where it is converted into ordinary Portland cement with no process emissions. The leaching agent is then regenerated such that no agent is produced or consumed in the production of this cement. The waste silicate from the leach step can be converted into a supplementary cementitious material. The co-production of supplemental cementitious materials allows our process to be both more efficient and cost competitive compared to conventional cement production. So where are these rocks located? Calcium silicates and basalts are among the most common rocks on the surface of the earth. There is plenty of rock to make the world's demand for cement. Because we do not use limestone, our process is more than 50% cleaner than conventional cement production if natural gas is used as the heating source. In summary, 
Our process can make ordinary Portland cement with fewer than 50% the emissions of a conventional cement production process. This has the potential to dramatically reduce global CO2 emissions without forcing anyone to, in industry to adopt a new material. We really appreciate the support from the DOE and we are eager to talk to more people in advanced manufacturing as well as the building technologies office. Furthermore, if you are looking for a job in process engineering or extractive metallurgy, please reach out to me. Thank you very much. I'm Mitchell Singh, CEO and co-founder of Inchfab. Just as 3D printing has revolutionized how we think about macrofabrication, I want to share with you today Inchfab's vision for democratizing microfabrication to unlock the next generation of microchips. The advantages of democratization are all around us and enables the growth of more specialized products and empowers millions with the ability to make and innovate, fueling the growth of new industries. Intrab aims to democratize innovation within the microelectronics industry. It costs billions of dollars to build a state-of-the-art fab facility, and it requires the infrastructure of a building the size of a city block. At Intrab, we have developed a $1 million tabletop ultra-low-cost platform that is more than 10,000 times smaller, 1,000 times cheaper, and 10 times faster. Compared to the past, where billion dollar fab facilities solely produce chips for high volume cohesive computer markets, we're now on a cusp of a new era, where advances in microfabrication are spreading to less cohesive industries outside of microelectronics, like biology and aerospace. These class of devices are commonly referred to as more than more devices, or MTM devices for short, and need a new fabrication paradigm optimized for their, device, the, their diverse market segments they serve. To get an MTM device made today, you have three options. You got a multi-user facility like a university fab, a foundry, in other words, not a contract manufacturer, or build your own fab. Now, none of these options are ideal for the vast majority of MTM devices. At a multi-user facility, you end up fighting for time on specific tools, using tools that are often 30 plus years old and also contaminated from multiple users. At a foundry, you're forced to use a limited set of standard processes, pay exorbitant amount of capital, and wait nine or more months just to get a device back to test an idea. Now, if none of these options work for you, you're forced to build your own fab facility, which requires an extremely high capex investment, often out of the reach for many device developers. Now, although the current ecosystem is not optimal for the reasons I just mentioned, a few devices do manage their way through successful foundry and IDM levels of production. The challenge, however, is getting to this point and tra traversing what we call a fabrication gap in the industry. Now, many new MTM devices technologies fail to span this gap. Right. You could start in a university fab where you can make a couple of devices fairly cheaply, but to scale, you have to go immediately into high volume production, where the engagement cost at a foundry is well over half a million dollars. With over 2,000 MEMS companies or MTM companies in existence today, if we could span this gap more efficiently, we can enable new innovations powered by microfabrication. Now, Intra bridges this gap in the ecosystem by using its proprietary platform to provide foundry services thus really bringing IDM and foundry capabilities to the MTM community, bring fabulous ecosystem, bring, uh, creating a fabulous ecosystem which allows device designers a faster and lower cost path alternative to device fab, to, to, for device innovation. Now, Intrap is not a foundry that will compete with any existing commercial foundries as our, as our optimal volumes are significantly lower. Thus, what we seek to do is actually partner with foundries to augment their capabilities to help them better operate at their most optimal utilization and capacity. So this setting allows for what we call a win-win-win situation. First, it's a win for the customers as they now have access to quick, low-cost, agile fab. And it's a win for Inchfab as the foundries, as both Inchfab and the foundries have a symbiotic relationship, which allows both the Inchfab and foundry to run at their respective optimal volumes. So how does this work? So today, when customers approach a foundry, they bet on the customer that's most likely going to high volume production. Right, the other nine get put in the back of the queue or never make it into production. So by partnering with the Foundry, these nine companies then become Inchfab's channel of customers. So we have already established a, par a partnership with one Foundry and we envision that this strategy will allow us to gain the fastest market traction. We started from our PhD work at MIT to revolutionize microfabrication. In fall of 2019, we incorporated and were accepted into the Cyclotron Road Incubator. We have since gained significant traction and are now raising a seed round to accelerate our development and serve us our first customers. If you or know anyone that are experiencing hurdles in microfabrication as I described above, or are interested in funding a new microfabrication paradigm, we'd love to talk with you.
My name is Ryan Pearson. I'm the co-founder and COO of Cypress Materials, and I'm excited to tell you about how Cypress is reinventing color. As a society, we have progressed significantly in many technical aspects, from advanced sensors, reducing the cost of energy, to recycling. However, in many of these fields, the underlying unifier is that we use colorants in almost every market, and this crucial component is holding us back. Dark objects like cars are difficult for autonomous driving vehicles to see because the dark color doesn't reflect the signal that these devices rely on to map the world around them. And nearly 90% of all homes have dark surfaces which heat up and ultimately have shorter life cycles than their white surface alternative due to aesthetics. And large companies are shifting focus to sustainability while still using colors like green, which cannot be recycled or composed of safely because they contaminate everything else. Green is so difficult to manufacture that toxic substances are used to stabilize it. Broadly, color encodings are limited by aesthetics, application, expense, range, and toxicity. To reinvent how humans interact with color, we took inspiration from nature. For example, unlike the blue colors from pigments and dyes that surround us, the cypress morpho butterfly gets its color from structural color. Their wings are covered in tiny scales that reflect a specific wavelength of light, which we perceive as blue. Using commercially available raw materials and Nobel Prize winning chemistry, we can make the materials that when formulated and painted onto a surface will form nanostructured reflective coatings. Cypress is democratizing nature's sustainable structural color that doesn't require any pigments or dyes. With our paint, we are able to achieve deep, beautiful matte blues, such as the one produced by the Bird of Paradise flower, or opalescent angle-dependent colors that can't be achieved through any other means. Similar to how nature has evolved to reflect different colors, our polymers can easily be tuned to reflect ultraviolet, visible, and near-infrared wavelengths, and our reflections can be tuned within a few nanometers. In this video, we are excited to demonstrate how Cypress Materials achieves sustainable color without any pigments or dyes. Our proprietary copolymer blend enables the beautiful colors which you are about to see. The solid shown here can be tuned to produce colors during manufacturing or formulation. And our materials are developed from raw feedstocks that can be found on your grocery store shelves and are common in the paint industry. By mixing blue, the shortest wavelength of the color spectrum, and red, the longest wavelength of the color spectrum, you can get all of the colors in between. After application of the paint, the solvent is allowed to evaporate, and our copolymer facilitates the critical self-assembly process and forms into vibrant reflective coatings. While this demonstration allows you to visualize our visible reflective coatings, you can extrapolate that ultraviolet and infrared reflective coatings can be formed in a similar fashion and would be beside the blue and the red colors seen here. You can apply our paint with a simple paintbrush and eliminate toxic pigments and dyes from consumer products like nail polish. These materials can also be formulated into an aerosol can, opening up the possibility of a do-it-yourself application. In this first video, we see a spray application take place on a 3D object similar to an automotive body. Next, we can see a spray application wherein our infrared or our heat reflective coating can be applied to rough and uneven surfaces such as an asphalt shingle. Imagine this application making building materials more energy efficient while maintaining the dark colors that consumers love. Our team is supported by the National Science Foundation, the Wells Fargo Innovation Incubator, and the Department of Energy to develop heat reflective coatings for the built environment. While painting everything white would be the most energy efficient solution, 90% of building surfaces are dark and heat up. Our infrared reflective clear coat product will be the first heat reflective coating that can turn dark coatings into an energy star rooftop without imparting an aesthetic change. We are already working with one of the world's largest paint companies to advance our coatings. Cypress has performed extensive customer discovery to find early markets that have generated revenue to bridge the minimum five-year durability testing that is required for these materials. Over the last two years, we have been working with automotive paint companies who want to expand their color palette and keep their cars cool with our cool reflective colors. We are fully engaged with all three tier one paint suppliers in the US and have already got a joint development agreement in this space. In the last year, we have already made over 100,000 in sales and have applied our structural color to our beachhead market of consumer applications. These markets use the exact same core material as the building materials and in transportation. 
the early market adopters provide a natural stepping stone to de-risk scale, and we are sequencing the markets to pull us through to larger volume, lower margin applications. Our team is looking for ambitious first market adopters for environmentally friendly and brilliant colors. Please let us know if you know any companies that are as excited about sustainability as we are. Hello, I'm Jay Provine, co-founder and CEO of Align Carbon. We are members of Activate Cyclotron Road in the 2019 cohort. Align Carbon manufactures carbon nanotubes for integrated circuits. The exponential increase in computing capability exemplified by Moore's law is coming to an end due to the lack of additional performance that can be squeezed from individual transistors. Today's state-of-the-art FinFET device features nanoscale fins of silicon as a semiconducting transistor channel. Performance can be improved by sculpting the silicon in different ways, but this will only provide a factor of two in energy delay product, which is a combination of speed of operation and energy efficiency. If the semiconductor channel material is instead made of carbon nanotubes, the energy delay product improvement would be 9x. This is still a far cry from the orders of magnitude improvement we've seen in the recent past circuitry. Instead, the route to significant improvement will happen at the system level by connecting high performance logic in more intimate contact with other functionalities. Instead of being separate chips on the same board, these functionalities can be realized in a single monolithically integrated chip if the stringent constraints of high performance logic can be lifted. And the ultimate solution exists where we can order these functionalities any way we choose in the stack. Few examples of the benefits that can come from stacking high performance logic on several different types of chips. First is logic on logic for high performance computing. Second, logic on photonics for an improved data transfer. And finally, logic on sensors for ultimate IoT edge computing capabilities. Let's look specifically at that case of a 3D monolithic logic on logic integration. Instead of the current standard where logic and memory are separate chips on the same board connected in 1D by a bus, we move to a system where two stacked layers of logic and an upper layer of memory. Now the intermediate logic layer can provide additional computing power and reconfigure the routing of direct pixel-to-pixel -pixel communication between memory and logic. This effectively ends the memory bottleneck for data-intensive computing and promises a thousand X improvement in system-level energy delay product. A study led by Subhashish Mitra's team at Stanford University showed that 3D chips exactly like shown on the previous slide fabricated at 90 nanometers can outperform the state-of-the-art seven nanometer chips from TSMC over an order of magnitude improvement in speed and almost a factor of seven improvement in energy efficiency are both realized by the drastic reduction of the memory access. Thus, 75X improvement can be realized even with eight generations of old silicon technology. The International Roadmap on Devices and Systems has pointed to carbon nanotubes as the ideal material for upper layer logic. To realize maximum performance, carbon nanotubes must be aligned and highly pure with less than one in a million carbon nanotubes being metallic. Our competition utilizes solution purification techniques, which leave the carbon nanotubes highly unordered. Align Carbon is the only company integrating high purity and alignment of carbon nanotube material. Align Carbon's technology is built on three pillars, crystallographically aligned growth of high quality carbon nanotubes, a proprietary purification technique that removes either metallic or semiconducting carbon nanotubes without wet processing or the need to build additional circuitry. And finally, a low temperature transfer process to move the aligned carbon nanotubes from starting wafer to target wafer en masse. By providing the highest quality carbon nanotube material in a form factor that allows us to seamlessly integrate them into integrated circuit boundaries, chip designers in a range of applications can design systems utilizing our carbon nanotube material at high volume through the existing silicon chip infrastructure. I started Align Carbon in 2018 with Carr Beasley. We've been awarded grants by the National Science Foundation and received equity financing from angel syndicates and VCs. This allowed us to bring Jonas Humane in to join our team in January of this year. I would love to speak with anyone interested in our technology and want to talk further about partnerships, investment, or to understand our vision more thoroughly. I want to return to that promise of a thousand X improvement. Last year at the Hot Chip Conference, all these leaders in silicon processor space got together and heard a keynote address from the VP of research at TSMC, given on the uh, touting the 2000X improvement in energy delay product with carbon nanotube based 3D chips. So maybe 1000X isn't the right way to look at this. And it's great to know that people in the industry are pushing in the same direction we are. Thank you so much for your time. I look forward to connecting with you further. 
Hi, I'm Grayson Zuloff, a co-founder of Resonant Link, and we're building the autonomous future of power. Our breakthrough wireless charging technology is already used by Fortune 500 customers in medical devices and in consumer electronics. And while these demonstrations are exciting, we're focused on something bigger, building the charging infrastructure of the next century. Autonomous electric drones, robots, and vehicles are here today, with over 100 million more coming online in the next decade. Despite the promise of electric autonomy in manufacturing, logistics, and transportation, the method for charging them hasn't changed in over 100 years. This is General Electric's EV from 1910, and today charging looks much the same 110 years later. For our customers, manual charging results in poor capital utilization, huge batteries to operate for a full day, and in the end, charging remains one of the last bottlenecks to full autonomy. We're starting to tackle this problem in the place where full autonomy, at least outside of charging, is here today, with the world's best charger for automated mobile robots. Resonant Link builds fast, small, wireless chargers for zero maintenance and full autonomy, delivering both the transmitter on the left and the receiver mounted on the robot on the right. In the end, our wireless charger is five times faster and 10x lower cost than our competitors, providing wireless power at the same price and same speed as wired solutions. Our customers are rob robotics OEMs like Amazon and Omron, most of whom have been desperately trying to find a wireless charging solution for the better part of the last decade. Our receivers are designed into their robots, providing value to their end customer through higher productivity, and these OEMs serve as our end customer on the receiver side and as a channel partner for the offboard stations installed in factories. But why, with all of the investment into wireless power, is this the first compelling wireless charger for autonomous electric fleets? And it's based on the magic inside, a fundamental breakthrough that shatters the limits of conventional wireless charging with 5x higher performance and 5x lower coil costs, changing the charging speed, size, and cost on a fundamental basis for our end customers. Our first customers, especially, have been trying to solve this problem for 50 years to eliminate the wires through the skin that are needed to power implantable medical devices today. After validating our claims during an on-site demo and later through an animal study, we've been working together for the last 18 months and are nearing close on a multi-million dollar license deal and are expanding with three other JDAs in new medical device applications. As we look to build the power solution for the fleets of the future, we're again exploring industries where customers have been yearning for wireless power but can't find anyone that can deliver. In mobile robotics, our alpha cohort is filling up fast with two signed LOIs already, and we expect to deliver a 10x better pilot-ready wireless charger to these customers in Q2 of next year. From there, we're, we're building to the largest market of electric vehicles, where, where we will be demonstrating our coils on vehicles to get started on integration into this longer time frame, but much larger market. Our team is built around our deep technical expertise to sustain our unmatchable price and performance in the years to come. Beyond the technology, though, we're also a group with experience in demanding environments like automotive and medical, and have bootstrapped our hardware company to over a million dollars in non-dilutive funding with 750K of that in customer revenue in the two years since our founding. We're currently closing a seed round to grow our team and would love to talk to funders, partners, and anyone interested in building or using the next generation of charging. There are rechargeable batteries in every device and vehicle from smartphones to EVs. And with trillions of dollars to be invested in charging infrastructure, this is our chance to define the foundation of the next century of charging. Let's make it fast, let's make it zero maintenance, and in the end, let's make it one that accelerates and enables electrification for the fleets that need it most. Thank you, and I'd be happy to take any questions during the Q&A session. Great job, great job, all of the innovators today, and especially a uh, big thanks to Cyclotron Road 
and all of your work and effort to, to help with the event. Now it's time to go to the second breakout session. Remember, the whole purpose of this program in part is to connect these, uh, these uh, innovators with you. So please, please go to the breakout of your choice. Take advantage of this opportunity and get to the breakout and submit your questions following the simple on-screen instructions. Thank you.